Hey, how's it going? I know the international break sucks. I'm also excited for the return of club football this weekend, but this is what we're stuck with for now. Hey, at least there's drama over in Italy. That's fun. I mean, the biggest story coming out of the peninsula this break has been the emergence of Matteo Rettegi and whether or not he should have been welcomed into the national team. Now, Italy has long had an interesting and occasionally racist discourse around who is Italian and who can play for the national team, but Argentina is a pretty special case because from 1860 to 1920, almost 4 million Italians immigrated to Argentina. In fact, many Argentines playing in Europe today have Italian citizenship through ancestors who were immigrants, and in Italy there's a special category for these people, they're called oriundi. This is mostly for the purpose of not having to procure a visa to live in the EU, not necessarily because they want to represent the national team or anything. But there are a few cases when someone who was born and raised in Argentina decides to play for the Italian national team because they have citizenship and Italy show interest. In the past, this was the case for Mauro Camoranesi, who won the World Cup in 2006. Back in the 1930s, Argentina's star player at the first ever World Cup, Luis Montes, swapped allegiance to Italy and won the 1934 World Cup, and now it's Rategui's turn. No pressure, kid. This is just to say that Argentine-born players playing for the Azzurri is not some unheard of thing, and Italy are pretty desperate for a striker that can score for the national team. But now that we have the more general context out of the way, let's talk about his story, how he actually became a professional, why he isn't playing for Argentina, and where he's headed next. Born on April 29, 1999, in San Fernando, a wealthy suburb of Buenos Aires, Retegui split his childhood between both football and hockey. His father is, is Carlos Retegui, one of the greatest Argentine hockey players and coaches ever, while his mother, Maria de la Paz Grandoli, was also an Olympian in hockey. And coming from a family of River Plate fans, it only made sense that Mateo would join their youth system for both sports. He was equally good at both football and hockey, but in his teenage years determined that he wanted to devote himself fully to the latter and follow in his parents' footsteps. He was a part of the Argentine national hockey team's youth setup, plus he missed his friends back home in San Fernando who were 20 kilometers away from River's training center? Okay, that doesn't make much sense to me, but they are his words, not mine. He quit playing organized football altogether for two years when he was 14, only playing football casually with his friends. Then, at the age of 16, he did a 180 and decided football was for him. Mateo got a trial at River's bitter rivals, Boca Juniors, and made the team. He says that at Boca, he felt special and loved. He was moved up the pitch from midfield to become a striker, his large six-foot frame making him very well suited for the position. He progressed through the levels of Boca's youth program, eventually making his debut for the senior team coming on for Carlos Tevez on November 14th, 2018. In his time at Boca, he also began representing the Argentine national team at the U19 and U20 levels. Unfortunately, he could not secure much playing time at the young age of 19, so he spent a year out on loan at Estudiante de la Plata, where he was top scorer in netting 5 goals in 36 games. His talent was still evident, even in a team that was epically bad that season, so Francesco Totti signed him to his talent agency in 2020, and this is what Totti had to say about him during the scouting process. Bravo. Forte, sì. forte, forte. Sì. Che ruolo? Ruolo tuo davanti? Sì, mezza punta attaccante. Eh, ma gli argentini, figa, ce ne sono. Argentini e brasiliani ce ne hanno. È devastante. Sì, eh. Sì. Non dire il nome, non dire un cazzo. No, Chiaro questo cane. è matto, sì. Ok, così va. Retegui would go out on loan again the following year to Tachere de Cordova, scoring 6 goals and getting 4 assists in 44 games, with the team finishing in 3rd place and qualifying for the Copa Libertadores. Not insane numbers, but certainly an improvement, and having the opportunity to play in a better team undoubtedly went a long way in helping him shine. Now at the start of 2022, Retegui was sent out on loan again by Boca Junior, this time to the newly promoted Tigre on a 2 year deal. It was starting to look like maybe Boca didn't really have that much faith in his abilities, opting for Dario Benedetto, who was a more proven scorer in the league. I mean, at least Mateo was closer to San Fernando now. But this year was different. Mateo set the Argentine league on fire, finishing top score of the league with 19 goals in 27 games. They came in all shapes and sizes. His nose for goal and old school number 9 style of play were on full display. He helped the club to a 7th place finish, qualifying them for the Copa Sudamericana. But even with these performances, he was not going to be taken seriously for the Argentine national team over the likes of Lautaro Martinez, Paulo Dybala, and Julian Alvarez, who were more proven talents than he was. Retegui himself acknowledged that he needed to keep improving before he tested himself at the highest level. Following his 2022 season as top scorer, Boca Juniors had the option to terminate his loan. Boca had just won the league, even with an underperforming Dario Benedetto and some miraculous performances from the youngster Luca Langoni. They could become a force to be reckoned with with the addition of Retegui. But rather admirably, Matteo said that he wanted to stick with Tigre so that he could repay the faith and love that they had shown him. It was also made clear to him that he would probably have to play second fiddle to Benedetto at Boca, so he stayed put at Tigre. Nonetheless, he liked to keep helping Tigre overperform for a team that had just been promoted. In the first part of this 2023 season, he leads the Argentine league in scoring again with six goals in eight games, attracting more attention from Europe as his release clause of Boca Junior stands at only 19 million euros. On March 17th, 2023, with an injury immobile in Raspadori, Roberto Mancini called up Matteo Retegui to the Italian national team. Retegui is eligible for citizenship through his maternal grandfather who came from Sicily. 
when the Argentina coach Nuno Scaloni was asked about the move in a press conference, he stood by the players that he had called up for Argentina who had won him the World Cup. And even though Retegui had reportedly represented Argentina at U19 and U20 level, Scaloni asserted that he's never one to force a player to play for his team, but wishes Mateo all the best. This was fairly controversial in Italy, and it wasn't exactly a good look that Retegui can't speak a lick of Italian. Como? He spells Matteo with one T instead of the Italian too. But the players in the national team seem to have his back and are speaking highly of him. It was clear that Mancini believed in him when he started both qualifiers over Gianluca Scamacca, scoring a goal in each game. It's pretty interesting to see the shift in how Italian media perceives him now. There's even talk that the success of this experiment will lead Mancini and his staff to poaching even more young Argentines, specifically attackers, which could be a topic in another video, but we'll see if that actually happens. Matteo's father, Carlos, has recently reiterated that they will not go back on the decision and will indeed stick with Italy. This international break has put Europe on notice. His stock has shot up. I'm seeing him tied to all kinds of clubs. His dad is reportedly conducting meetings with potential transfer destinations on their trip to Europe, so we'll see what happens when the summer transfer window opens. For now, he'll go back to play with Tigre and probably score an ass little goals for them. He's definitely one to keep an eye out for, though. But that's all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Let me know if you like this style of video where I give different players stories in kind of a long form like this. I'm planning a fairly in-depth one on Lisandro Martinez next, so stay tuned for that. Uh, until next time, bye.